we're discussing today the issue of the biblical claim for God and the question what makes the God of the Bible different than all the other gods and Santa Claus for that matter you know for uh, the Marvel comic characters etc etc what makes what makes God any this Zeus why is the God of the Bible different from all the other gods okay. so the what makes God different the God of the Bible different is also what makes most false sects which are uh, what you would normally regard as non-Christian non-Judeo-Christian based religions also false and I, I have to specify that because um, you know it's not just about you know saying that the gods don't exist it's also about the religious uh, or re religious ideas that have existed. Because there's some religious ideas that don't have God. And they have like aliens. Okay, you know which one I'm talking about, right? So there's other ideas uh, that involve belief. And, and so how do we know also, not just those that involve God, but or gods, but also those that are involving <laughs> out of out of this world um, belief systems. How do we know they are also false? And then also, what does false mean? False means that they're man-made, right? Because if they're false, then they're man-made. In other words, man made up this religion. So how do we know this? How can we uh, test for man-made religion? And again, how does the God of the Bible, this, how is he distinct from that? And how are the Judeo-Christian based faiths distinct from all the others? So the the reason for that is because everything that's man-made assumes existence that's how you know because if it assumes existence and what do i say assume well how how can that you know it has to exist no no. See, that's the mistake everyone is making. Existence has a very clearly defined definition. Okay. And in that definition, it, it describes in detail what existence is other than the circular reasoning that it employs when it refers to reality. Because, of course, when you go see the definition of reality, it throws you back to existence. Circular reasoning. Okay, but other than that, other than that, because that's another video, and I've already done videos on that. Other than that, existence and reality always are based on things and substance two things things and or substance of course things have substance they're made of some substrate some substance so it's always implied that a thing has substance but uh, you know so that's part of the definition. All right. 
So again, all of the other gods, any god you want to point to, all of them claim to exist. That means that, that they have, they are a thing, or they have substance. Mater matter, matter is also part of the description or the definition. So they have material substance. They are material things. That is reality. And that is existence. Anything that does not have material substance or is it's not matter, right, does not exist, doesn't qualify for existence. And so that, that's the issue. And why is it an issue? Because you say, well, it has to exist or it doesn't. It simply exists or it doesn't. Now we go to the distinction. That is true with all the gods. It is true with all the religions, all the false religions in particular, that they insist that their guy exists or their concept their religiously, their relig their concept of for relig religiosity or the purpose of their organization, that that exists. That is all the the claim. Okay, so because all of these religions make that claim, and again, each god in their respective theologies make the same claim. That is how you know that they are false. And now we get to the clincher and to the distinctiveness of the God of the Bible. Because the God of the Bible never claimed to exist. And none of his prophets, none of his folk, his peeps, None of these cavemen and goat herders, as I hear a lot of atheists refer to these people, <laughs> none of them in their zeal to, you know, prove their God exists and, you know, prove their case, none of them thought to ever state, hey, God exists, not one. Not God himself in the claims and not the folks who, his proponents. None of them, biblically speaking, or a lot of Christians will tell you, hey, God exists, God exists. Again, they're reacting to the atheistic, God doesn't exist, give us proof. Okay, so that's why they say, no, God does exist. It's just a, a response, but it's not actually correct. God never claimed to exist. If you do a search in the Bible, King James Version, you look for exist, it doesn't exist. <laughs> God never says, I exist. He never, God, no one said that God exists in the Bible. Okay? So the claim of the Bible that is claimed to be about the God of the Bible and indeed inspired by the God of the Bible, by its own claims, never said he exists. So the atheistic attitude or opinion that these goat herders and the cavemen were, were trying to, you know, they, it's, it's a created religion. It's man-made. You don't have that case any longer. I mean, it's a, it's a mistaken uh, perspective. Because in actuality, the Bible does not state, either by God's own claims or the claims about the God of the Bible, in the Bible, nobody says that God exists. In fact, the very first verse of the Bible, the very first thing right off the bat, is a claim that tells you or gives you information that the God of the Bible created everything, all existence, everything that's real, that he was before 
anything that is real, that you and I call real, and anything that you and I will call existing. The rest of the Bible tells you that God created everything, and if, 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 if there is, if it doesn't, if it's not a thing, God didn't create it. You see? So the rest of the Bible confirms also the idea, the, the concept, that the God of the Bible does not, in fact, exist. Because existence, not by the biblical definition, it's not because the Bible defines existence. I just told you it doesn't occur in the Bible. The Bible doesn't define existence. Your dictionary does. And reality or what's real, your dictionary does. So your definition leaves God, the God of the Bible, out of being able to be referred to as existing or real. See? But that doesn't, again, if you are, if you are unable to think, you don't have the cognitive capacity, you're not going to understand the implications here. But I know there are atheists out there that have the mental acuity what you what 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 other atheists low level thinkers would claim uh, about Christians or like myself that I'm doing gymnastics mental gymnastics well you know that means I'm mentally fit you know they say s such stupidity but it matches with their inability to to uh, comprehend the inference and the implication of a God that is before. See, I didn't say existed. No, no. Because I'm using the correct, as the Bible states it, that God is. It doesn't say it exists. It says God is. That he is before everything and reality and existence itself. Again, throughout the rest of the scriptures where it de tells you that before everything, that everything is, is depending on God's uh, uh, sustaining it and maintaining it, right? It, it gives it to the Son, the Son of God, through Him and by Him and for Him, etc. When you read the scriptures, if you were bothered to do that. But in any case, the first verse of the Bible throws out any similarity with any gods ever in the history of mankind and number two throws out this idea that cavemen and goat herders were trying to you know make a make a new religion because if it was humanly based if this was of human uh, conceptualization I mean even you atheists couldn't come up with this idea I mean, you don't even think this way, do you? So how do you expect cavemen and, and, and goat herders to come up with a concept that's like... How do you think they figured that out? They didn't. But then, you know, how do we know that? Because no one else had ever did that. I mean, it wasn't even a, a thing that could have been conceived. And I don't even think that the people writing it... Because how many years have gone by? How many generations of people reading Genesis and they never read it and seen what, what is clear? That what it's implying is that God doesn't exist. How many? Because you atheists could have then used that for a long time. Oh, Genesis 1 well, says that God doesn't exist. What a stupid book. <laughs> because, you know, instead of saying that God exists, it tells you that it doesn't. He does it. Oh, you know, these are caving. They didn't know what they were doing. No, no. Because it wouldn't work, would it? It won't work. And you know it. <laughs> the fact that. Um, these cavemen and goat herders wrote that first verse of the Bible it tells you there has to be something with that because that is pretty dawn on spot especially the fact that it, it, the thread co continues throughout the scripture and yet no one no one religiously speaking has ever focused on this issue 
And you guys who went to Sunday school whenever it was, or Shabbat school, you also were never exposed to this information, and yet it's the first verse of the Bible. You didn't know about that. Look how far we've come from cavemen, from uh, the, uh, you know, the de development of the human species, as you say, from evolution. Come on now. So the Bible is distinct. The claim that the Bible makes in the first verse of Genesis is distinct. Making the God of the Bible distinct from all other gods and the Judeo religions distinct from all other ideas and, 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 and religions simply because it is the only one that is conceptually valid and cannot be, in other words, it is not provably wrong. It's not provably wrong. All the other religions you can prove wrong. You can prove that the, the God who claims existence doesn't exist. Because up to now, you've been covering air, all these other gods saying that, you know, we can't prove uh, these make-believe and fantastical things. Yes, you can. I think you're being too, uh, you know, too uh, lightheaded here. We can prove that Santa Claus doesn't exist. I mean, you know, it's, it's just dumb to say that, you know, to compare Santa Claus with the God of the Bible. It's simply wrong. And we can go through all the gods the same way. They, they, they are obviously man-made because they are claimed to exist. They all claim to exist. And only the Bible and the God of the Bible claims differently. And so that makes it completely distinct. From all the others, so you cannot no longer, you know, you atheists have to change your uh, your position, because simply, God doesn't exist. So you're right, and we're right, because God still is. Does it? He has nothing to do with existence except the fact that He's the Creator of it. Oh, we need proof that he created. No, how how can you prove if what you're looking for is the creator within? Because you're saying it has to exist. That's the only way you can have proof is if it exists. But if God creates the, the uh, environment of proofing, then what are, you, what are you looking to prove? You will not see God in anything that's created. Just like if, when my books, if you go to look at my books, you'll never find me in them. You can't find me. You can't say, hey, hey, here he is. Here's a Reverend Gilbert Rosa. Here he is. No, you can't because I'm not in my books. I'm not in my creations. I'm not in my software that I develop. I'm not in the websites that I develop. So you, you can't find. If you became aware, like I posited this question before in an atheist group, if you, if you, uh, you know, if if a creation of man became self-aware, how would it know that it's uh, it's cre that I'm its creator or, or who the cre the author is is its creator? How? Because if it would only look within its own self, its own environment, and would they see God there? Would they see its creator? No. Would there be evidence of its creator there? No. Especially when we're talking about a perfect God who creates perfectly. That means that what he creates doesn't need help. It doesn't need, it doesn't show even that it needed an, out, an outside source to be. That's the problem with you guys. I mean, yeah, are these goat herders? Hey, oh, I mean, a lot of you atheists with your degrees. You really should have gotten into shepherd, really. Goat herding and even just going out and living as a caveman. 
you would have been better for me. Take care.